Dear Poppy, I'm sitting on the train as I write this on the way to visit Fiona for Christmas. Oh, and I'm traveling alone. Alone in a foreign continent more than 7,000 miles away from home. I've been spending the last almost four months staying in student accommodation at the University of Edinburgh. I think it's time I updated you. So, a few hours after you left, I turned 18. When I was half this age, I remember laying on your belly as you expressed how special it was that I was turning 10 in a couple of months. It was just the two of us that lazy afternoon, waking up from one of our father-daughter naps in your room. You explained that each time a person grows a decade older, God draws a cross on their forehead so they'd become wiser. I remember gaping at this as I thought about how impossibly long 10 years was. It, it was gonna take forever before I'd even earn my second cross. In my child brain, I saw life to be lived marking the calendar day by day, advancing from one level to the next. Thinking about it now, this dream of growing up mostly came from wanting to relate to you. I think I wanted to be an adult so I could just be next to you more. Remember when I told you how I found the tradition of birthdays ultimately anticlimactic, like how the symbolic gesture of blowing out the candles never made me feel any older, just wasteful and slightly idiotic? <laughs> The moment I turned 18, though, it was like all the light in my world blew out. But I couldn't do anything except to keep going, I guess. So I reached Edinburgh. Mommy tells me she and so many other people are proud of me for still going despite what happened, but honestly, I knew I wasn't strong enough to stay. I couldn't stay and cope with the buried memories, so I knew I had to get myself out there and make new ones. So I met new people. I tried going to parties, tried to live the so-called teenage dream I'd been outcasted from. I even went on my first date. But when trying to change myself backfired, I finally made the change. Suddenly, I, I started making real friends and finding my own pace. I have so many stories to tell you, stories that would make you laugh, inspire another one of your philosophical discussions, but I, I also wish you'd seen the many times I had to pick myself up, snap myself out of waiting for you to come save me. I wish you'd know how sometimes unbearable it feels to live in a world without you. But I made a promise, and I do want to see it through. It's here on New Year's Eve, Mommy and Nico went back early, so it was just the two of us with Darren. You couldn't get me to stop drinking because I was curious about how drunk people look so happy. Then, when we got back and I saw Nico sleeping, I cried because I couldn't wish her a happy new year. It made you laugh, then it made me laugh, and it was a happy start to the new year indeed. This New Year's Eve, you'll be pleased to know that I will be spending it sober, and I'll be alone in my room as I wait for this video to upload. All to wish you a happy new year, puppy. I love you. Goodbye. This video, mommy. Oh, hi. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year.